Thank you to Sugfest Games for helping make this episode possible. Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to Dice and Cards, the ultimate board and card game podcast for all your love of game needs. On today's installment, we will be talking about one of my new favorite games, The Red Dragon Inn. This is the first episode, and I am just so excited to be bringing this to you guys. The concept for this podcast, and hopefully very shortly accompanying video series, has been in the works for a long time now, to say the least, and I'm absolutely thrilled to finally be bringing it to life. This episode might be a bit longer than others, but I figured it is good to get the groundwork laid out first and foremost before we actually start getting into everything. That way we know what to expect for the future. And so, I mean, it's been, it's been long enough already. Who am I? Well, my name is Gavin. I will be your host through this podcast and resident board and card game junkie. I'm on a quest to make the ultimate board and card game collection, which is what has brought me to doing this podcast. Uh, you may have also heard me through other things that I do. I run two other podcasts that you should be able to find on whatever platform you're currently listening to this one on, uh, which is, one is called the Hot Cocoa Chats podcast, where it runs script-free with a guest mostly week by week. Uh, it's been sort of on a pause right now, but we will be getting back to it. And uh, it's where we just chit-chat about whatever we want. It's bonkers, it's calming, and the previous episode was my first special guest starring Brad Buell, who you, you may know does YouTube and other things under the account name Saturday. Uh, the other is called The Skywalk Podcast, where I use my astrophysics background to take my audience on a journey through the galaxy and talk about deep space objects and more. Specifically, I'm going through each one of the messy objects right now, while taking the time to get some astrology episodes in on the constellations. I also run my own mostly gaming YouTube channel called Zombified, that's Z-O-M-B-E-F-I-E-D, uh, for those that need the spelling, where I will be posting the accompanying video playthrough, hopefully eventually, to these games uh, once all that is set up. Also, I have accompanying social media accounts, so make sure to check those out. All right, guys, that's enough about me. If you want to learn more about me and the things I do, as always, you can check out the other things uh, that I do where I get a little more personal than what this podcast is going to be. So, speaking of this podcast, what exactly is this podcast and how is it going to work? So in Dice and Cards, I will take each episode to describe and walk you through um, a game that has been chosen. As of right now, it will be either sort of a card or board game. I will talk about the description of the game, the company behind it, and how it is played out, and my final thoughts in the game, since I will have played through at least one game uh, prior to recording the episode. So I've already played the game. So I know exactly how all of that works and everything. Along with these episodes, make sure to follow along on Twitter at Dice and Cards Pod, where I will be posting images with the episodes, as well as other updates and whatnot. Everything that you guys need visually and updates. All right, I think that should give everyone a nice overview on how things should play out and gives a nice little base to go off of as well. And so without further ado, let's talk about the Red Dragon Inn. So, who is the creator of the Red Dragon Inn? That is Slugfest Games, who you should have heard at the beginning. Um, Slugfest Games was created in 2002 by one Cliff Baum, Baum, B-O-H-M, I don't know how you pronounce that, who eventually passed the torch on to the current president, Jeff Morrow. Uh, morale. Uh, um, Baum is not directly involved in the company anymore, but he still kind of hangs around, gives input opinions and a little bit of consultations when needed. So that's kind of cool. I like that he's still, you know, involved with the process and all that. And like he was the creator of the company. So it's kind of cool that he still gets uh, like his his thoughts in there. Um, and s speaking of the company, their mission is to and I quote, 
to make ludicrously fun games that are dripping with theme, end quote. So I don't know about you, but that sounds very wet, uh, dripping with theme. But coming from one researching and playing and just knowing the company in general, and dripping with theme that they did. The company really gained their traction with the release of the game Red Dragon Inn in, I believe it was 2007, 2008, somewhere around there. Uh, the Red Dragon Inn very quickly became their flagship series, going uh, through multiple installments. They have just finished their Kickstarter, in fact, for their newest version, the Red Dragon Eight Inn 8 Pub Crawl. They continue to create new games and expansions. Some of those other games include Dungeon Decorators and High Noon Saloon. We're just going to focus on the Red Dragon Inn, and I, I love the series. It's great. So the Red Dragon Inn, or sometimes I'll just refer to it as RDI, because it's a little easier as for talking, um, is a two to four player game. I think you might be able to play with more, but I'm not sure. But two to four player card game created by Slugfest Games, where the objective is to be the last man standing in a bar. So it's a fun sort of cartoony uh, sort of RPG, and that is role-playing game for those that need the specification. I'm not referring to rocket-propelled grenade launchers. RPG that involves uh, around that revolves around drinking. I think that's a very funny game concept, personally. I don't know about you guys, um, but let's see what Slugfest actually describes the game as. And that it goes as following: The Red Dragon Inn is. Quote, the hilarious card game about what the adventurers do after the adventure. Each player takes the role of a different character at the party, at the tavern as they drink, gamble, and roughhouse each other. The last standing during this event of fun is the winner, end quote. As I mentioned before, they are, they are now working on sending out their first batch of the eighth installment of the series. Sometimes there's new characters with new abilities and quirks. Sometimes there's new game mechanics altogether. Sometimes they just up the chaos. And sometimes they, they do everything. The team at Slugfest are always finding new ways to keep the series spicy. And I definitely think that they just keep adding new stuff that I would never have thought about. But now that we have the basis of everything that we need to know, Let's go into the setup for this game. So the first thing to do is get all the pieces out of the box and out of the packaging and ready for action. Uh, then we're going to shuffle the cards, designated as Drink Deck. It will be a more brown colored. And put that shuffled pile somewhere where everyone can reach it. I would recommend the center of the table because everyone is going to have to use this deck. It's part of the function of your turn. You will have to use it. So make sure it's accessible for everyone. But now, this is the fun part. Everyone decides on a player and takes that player's player mat. Uh, this is going to be a rectangular uh, card that has the picture of the character, how the turn works, the numbers going around the edges from 0 to 20, as well as a couple other stuff on it. Depending on the group, this might be a fun way to get deep into the theme of the game as we earlier heard that it is dripping with theme and so uh get into character a little bit maybe start talking how that you think that character would talk act how that character would however you want to imagine it that's where the rpg kind of gets into stuff is that you can really become these characters but of course that's not necessary we can just play the game like normal that's how i played it when i did my playthrough so it's a normal card game if you want to as well no pressure but just thought I'd uh, let you know that this is usually when you start figuring out how your character is. And also, I'm going to be saying uh, you a lot, but if you're, if you're listening to this as a way to actually learn and set up the game, um, you is more going to be more generic. You as a character, everyone is going to need to set up their stuff the same way. But if you're just listening to fun, I'm still talking to you. So, hey, how's it going? So after grabbing your player mat, um, you also want to make sure to grab one of each markers. So one marker is going to be red and has a heart on it. This will be your fortitude. And the other will look like a beer stein. Those 
giant uh, drinking cups, I guess you could describe it as. Um, this will be your alcohol level. The other thing you want to have in front of you as a player uh, is the character's character deck. That's a lot of character, but the character deck for your person. Um, and so when you have all that in front of you, place your fortitude marker, the red heart, on 20 and the alcohol, the stein, on zero. Once you have all those set up, we will move on. So take 10 gold, those little gold coins, and place it near your character map. We will call this your stash. We want to make sure that's visible to other players as well. All the other gold uh, will be put aside and call this the inn. My recommendation is to put the inn probably near the center with the drink deck as well because there's a good chance, uh, I guess necessarily you don't, you might not have to, but chances are you're also going to have to draw and give to the inn at some point, so you want to make it accessible to everyone. And so once everyone has their gold and we have the money for the inn ready, then we are going to move on and start getting our character set up. So shuffle your character deck and draw the top seven cards. This will be your hand and you may look at these seven cards. The rest of the cards uh, you will place face down in front, like below your character mat and under the section that says deck. And so if you notice on your player card, there'll be three sections at, at the bottom, a little divided up, just a little area so you know where you should put everything underneath the deck, put them face down right there. And then uh, draw a card from the top of the shuffled uh, drink deck that should be in the center of the table or wherever you ended up putting it and put it face down under the section below your player mat that's called drink me. So now we have everything we need to be set up for the game. Also one thing to note is that uh, I would have a drink discard pile somewhere near the center of the table where the drink deck is as well so that everyone can put their drinks back there because you don't want to put it in your own personal discard. But congratulations, you have set everything up for the game and now you can start playing. But how do you do that? No fair, I'll walk you through it. If you ever forget, it is actually, in fact, printed on top of your player or character mat, which is a very nice thing I might add. Um, like out, more games should do this. Just put the basic basic steps right in front of your face because I know for sure I've definitely had to go back into the rules to figure out how games are played. But the basic course of action is you have a, a discard and draw a portion, an action, an order a drink, and then a drink phase. So those are the four phases. The first one being the discard and draw. So basically at the start of your turn, you can discard as many or as, f as few and that includes none at all, cards from your hand, your seven cards, and put them, fa or put them face up in your discard pile below the player mat. And it's actually going to be between your deck and the drink me pile, right in the center there. But you can discard up as many or as few, including zero, as you want. Draw back up to seven in your hand from your character de deck, and then you finish your first step. Next, we move on to the action phase. In this phase, look at your hand, and below the uh, title on the card, you will see action sometimes or anytime. And so at the top, very top of your uh, cards, it will have a bold, like a more bolded title, and then the action or sometimes or anytime, whatever, that kind of subcategory is right below it, still at the top. And so in this phase, you can play one action card. Read the title aloud, read aloud what the card does, and then say who it is affecting. Make sure to give a second for people to react or counter the card um, if they're able to before proceeding with the effects. Best part, you do not need to play anything if you do not want to, or if you can't. If you don't have an action card, then well, you don't have an action to play. But I do like that you don't have to actually play something. And so, this is also the time to start a round of gambling, which is a specified card that you will see in your hand. 
Um, this is best explained actually in the rules themselves for sake of time because that's a whole new can of worms. Um, so that's that, and that's where the game gets a little more complicated with these types of actions, encounters, all, drinks, all that kind of stuff. So for sake of time, I'm going to give you guys like the basic rundown of things. And then if you're actually going to play this or need some more clarifications, refer back to the official rules of the game. At the end of the day, like almost everything that you need to know is actually written right on the face of the cards themselves. So it's really nice how they did that. And so you've played your action, done your effect or not played anything at all. We move on to the third phase, which is the order a drink phase. In this phase, take a top, the top card from, your, from the drink deck that's in the center of the table, wherever you put it, and place it face down without you or anyone else looking at it. Nobody looks at it. Uh, take the top card, put it on top of somebody else's drink me pile. If there are no more cards in the drink deck, you guys have used them all. Um, everyone pays the in one gold to basically serve you guys a new round of drinks is how the lore goes. Um, but everyone pays the in one gold, and then you reshuffle like the discarded drink me cards, and there's your new drink deck. And so once you have ordered a drink for somebody, we move on to the fourth and final phase of your turn. And this is the drink phase. And so in this phase, you take the top card from your drink me pile, which again is in front of your player card, flip it over, and take the effects or follow the instructions. So you'll see when you flip it over, either a heart or a stein on it, assuming it's not something weird. But for now, you'll see a heart or a stein. The number on the stein is the alcohol content of that drink. And you need to move your alcohol marker up positively on your player card, the amount, the amount that it specifies. The fortitude hearts will either show a plus or a minus. So those are more straightforward of what you do with them. Um, if you see a stein that has a plus on it, so usually it'll be two steins on the card, in this case, one with a number, one with a plus, that means you have to have a chaser, which uh, you flip, open, flip over the next card in, the, in your thing and add it to your current drink. It gets a lot more complicated with that stuff as well, so again, go to the rules. And with that, also, sometimes you flip over cards that don't have any numbers on it, they have a lot of writing, and those are either drink events or drinking contests. Again, those are specified on the card. They have a long description of what they actually do, what players have to do, and all that stuff. But if you get confused, it's in the rules. And if you don't have any cards in your drink me pile, when, it get, when you get to the phase that you have to drink, congrats, you're sobering up. Look at you go. You're being a nice, responsible human. And you actually decrease your alcohol content by one on your player card. So good job, you sobered up a little bit. And after you have finished that fourth and final uh, phase, your turn is over and the person to your left goes. And so I'm sure at this point, now that we know how, the, how to set up the game, how to run a, a turn in the game, and which everyone knows how to basically keep the game going now, how do you win? How do I win? How do you win? How do they win? And for that, you basically just need to be the last person standing. It's almost, you can almost think of it less about how do I, how do I get to an objective and win, and more of how do I not lose. And so you lose in two ways. The first one, either by running out of gold, in which case you are kicked out of the inn by the wench and you are out of the game. Or the second way is you pass out. To pass out, your alcohol and fortitude level must either meet or the alcohol must exceed the fortitude. So as an example, if your alcohol is at 9, your fortitude is at 10, it, you're in a scary place, but you are in fact good. If your alcohol and fortitude are both 9, you pass out. And then if, if your alcohol is 10 and your fortitude is 9, in which case your alcohol is higher than your fortitude, you pass out. And then you're out of the game. And if you're the last person standing, everyone else has either been kicked out or passed out, congrats, you are the winni winner, good job, go get yourself a drink in real life as a celebration, assuming you are of appropriate age, and, uh, but I will say, if you have been drinking along with the game as drinks have been dealt out in the game, which I will, for the record, 
say that it could be dangerous and that you should definitely not do that, then maybe go get some water as a celebration because you probably need it. And so that is basically the overview of how the, how the game is. The last thing that I want to talk about is like a first-hand experience on the game, my experience. Because as I said before, I have played through a round of the game, and so I do know how the general flow and stuff works. And so, I actually really love it. I, I like the game. It is an incredible game. And once you get the hang of it, it can actually be a, it can be a blast. Um, I enjoy games that are really about like screwing the other players and countering them trying to screw you. And so I, I like all that almost like deception type of uh, mess with other people type of games. And this one, this one is that type of game at heart. And then they kind of put this fun theme twist on top of it. So it's great. Um, but at the end of the day, it's about trying to screw the other people over. That being said, I did mention once you get the hang of it. And so that was probably that's probably the biggest issue I have with the game, which almost really isn't an issue, but it is something to note is that there is a bit of a learning curve, um, especially in trying to find like that rhythm and flow of the game. I myself did not find it like that steep of a learning curve, but I know a couple of the people that I was playing with, they did find it kind of difficult to wrap their heads around some of the ways that the game worked. But I think for, for the average person, if you could understand how I describe the game and, the, and all that stuff, you should be fine with the rest of the game. It's, it's really, when, I guess it, it's kind of a hindsight thing, but it's really not that hard of a game to understand. It's just, a lot of it's a lot of things at once when you're trying to learn it but it's actually not that bad just kind of keep that in mind when you're if you're going uh, about getting this game if you're starting it for the first time especially if you're listening to it right now as you're setting up the game that would be really cool by the way so if you guys are actually listening to this while playing while like setting up the game that's really cool and shout out to you guys um but just keep that in mind however when you get that flow going, wow, you basically time travel. When I played the game, uh, we went through, we only went through one game. And when we finished, we noticed it had been like over two hours. So you really like time flies uh, when you're having fun is really the case with this game because you get sucked into it and it is so much fun. And again, we didn't even play like, like very role play esque. I think that's a word. We're going to go with that's a word. We didn't even play like acting as our characters. We were just playing it like a normal card game. So if you actually get into character, I imagine like you could play for hours on end with this, like just one round of this game. And so it is a little bit longer of a game. That being said, um, I'm sure you can do kind of like a, a lightning version of it, super fast rounds, kind of just speed run it. Um, but my opinion is that I would recommend uh, making sure that you have a good chunk of time allotted out when you're planning on playing the Red Dragon Inn. Just because I, I feel like it's it's better if you get the whole feel of the game and, and take your time, really get through it. Even if you know how the game works, just letting it build, build up and take its time. It makes the game so much better than trying to rush through it. Physically, the version I had for this review isn't actually the typical base Red Dragon Inn that you would get so i can't really say for certain about packaging and all that kind of stuff but the cards themselves feel very solid um the chips that you use in the game feel good they're nothing fancy quite honestly but you don't need anything fancy they work and they do don't feel cheap they feel good quality and so for especially for a company that's like they get their funding they get their their uh their speed going with kickstarter and stuff like that kickstarter kind of sometimes has a bad reputation but this is a legitimate company legitimate games it's a, it's very very well done and so i i i love i love how that is like look at that listen to that sound it's great and so slugfest really did a good a good job at the game uh through and through 
all levels, top to bottom. They really thought this out. Due to the subject matter of the game, I'm not recommending this game for little kids. I can't can't recommend it. I'm not going to give really an age. I guess I I if I had to give an age, I would say somewhere where alcohol is legal or whatever age alcohol is legal where you're playing this is probably appropriate given the subject matter because it is a ma- like more mature. It's talking about alcohol, that kind of stuff. And it's very like maturely sarcastic, I'll say. And so if besides that, assuming you're you're in a very you're in a mature state. I am 100% recommending this game. It is great. It's so much fun. And uh, I just I can't get over it. Even after playing, it's just been in the back of my head and I just want to play it again. It's just so much fun. And like that's that's even with me barely scratching the surface of the series, quite honestly, because like I I, I backed the um the eighth game that's coming out and so there's been seven versions so far and uh, like i said every time it's new characters sometimes like there's there's one character that also has like this rabbit named pokey and like the like the rabbit gets angry and that causes problems or there like there's just so much to the to the series it's it gets insane and there's so like as as much as this was a learning curve, it's going to be even more so trying to learn all the other stuff. But I'm so interested in it because it seems like so much fun. I've watched a little bit. I've seen a little bit. It looks like absolute fun. And so I, that's I'm going to eventually be doing that, taking my time to try to learn the new mechanics and all that and implement it how I can. And hopefully I can share that journey once I've completed each like once I've done a new game and all that with you guys because unfortunately that is gonna be where we start to wrap up this episode of the podcast I know I'm sad as well we actually kind of blasted through this a little bit I wasn't sure how how this first episode was go so at least I got a good understanding of how the pace of things would go and hopefully you guys got to see a little bit as well um, but there you guys go. There has been your full, like, sort of history, walkthrough, experienced review of the Red Dragon Inn by Slugfest Games. Once again, I would like to say thank you to Slugfest Games for helping make this episode podcast, uh, start making this episode and start this podcast series possible. They have been great, and so I really appreciate you guys. But you know who else has been great? and needs appreciation is you the audience the person on the other end of this listening to it um the person that's been dealing with me blabble into your blabble yeah blab into your uh eardrums for the past half an hour thank you because um you guys are just awesome especially those that have listened all the way through to this part thank you especially it means so much you guys are awesome um, and you really do mean the world to me. I know I'm saying that even though we're just starting the, the series, but I already can tell that you guys are going to be incredible. So that being said, I do want to hear what you guys liked and maybe things that can be improved upon in future episodes, because obviously this is kind of the pilot episode. So constructive uh, feedback is always appreciated. and also. I want to hear if you guys have played this game, or you're planning to, or you do after this. Tweet at me, reach out, whatever. I want to hear what your guys' experience and how you guys thought the game was. Um, I loved it, but maybe you guys didn't. Maybe you loved it more than me. Maybe you guys are Red Dragon Inn fanatics, and I just, I have no clue. So, I absolutely want to hear what your guys' experience with the Red Dragon Inn Slugfest games has been. Um, but with that, I will leave you guys. Uh, hopefully not for too long, but again, check out some of the other podcasts and content that I make. Thank you guys so much for listening in, and to all of you out there, have a great game night.